Damage can get the wall uh, talk about the unbounded uh, minimization because that can get you the partial computability. Um, in um, um, one of the previous contests, uh, we uh, have discussed bounding minimization. So suppose that you, you have a predicate uh, of uh, x1 to xn arguments in T, which is a counter, and uh, uh, we uh, can define a function of uh, n plus 1 arguments, g, x1 to xn, y, uh, among uh, uh, t less than or equal to y. Uh, y is the upper bound of the boundary of t. t ranges from 0 to uh, y. So uh, this returns the minimum boundary of t for which uh, this predicate is uh, true. Right? Now, if we um, uh, drop the upper bound, then uh, minimization becomes unbounded. So we can uh, define g, uh, uh, a function g, without any upper bound on the boundary of y. So it's the minimum of y for which uh, uh, this predicate, x1 to xn, uh, is true. Right? So uh, we check for uh, y equals to 0, then for y equals 1, and uh, so on. So here's a, uh, an example. We can defi define uh, this predicate dxy uh, such that uh, y is a uh, prime number and y is uh, strictly greater than x. Right? So in the example, uh, let's say we run g of 10 uh, y, g of 10. So find the first prime number which is strictly greater uh, than uh, 10. Right? So this is going to be a uh, minimum uh, boundary of y uh, for which uh, p10y is true. Right? Then net will be uh, 11, which is the first prime number uh, strictly greater than, uh, than 10. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, well, we can have, um, well, let's, let's, uh, let's consider another, um, another example. So let's define uh, this function uh, g x1 uh, g uh, uh, of x1 and x2 uh, to be equal uh, the minimum value of y uh, uh, such that uh, x1 uh, plus x2 x1 plus x2 equals y. So that that function uh, always uh, always returns because uh, for any x1 and x2 they are natural numbers they they sum up to some other uh, natural number so we will find that one um, so but things uh, may not always work out as nicely so here's another example um, uh, so uh, looking uh, for the minimum uh, value of z minimum z. Uh, such that z plus x1 is equal to x2. Right, and then <coughs> let's say if we call this g with 10 and uh, 1, then we're looking for uh, minimum of z, such that z uh, plus uh, 10 uh, is equal to 1. Uh, there is no such, uh, there is no natural number z that satisfies uh, that, uh, that equality. So this is undefined. Okay. Um, so we can uh, well let's consider a um, uh, a non-trivial uh, uh, example, a Goldbach conjecture proposed by Christian uh, Goldbach uh, in the first part of the 18th uh, century, one of the um, uh, well-known uh, and unsolved uh, problems in uh, in natural uh, in in number theory. So uh, and states that every even number greater than two uh, is uh, the sum of uh, is the sum of two primes. Or I should I, okay. Well, we can say a sum of two primes because that sum is not guaranteed to be even. Um, so there are a couple of examples. Four is equal to two plus two. Uh, even number greater than two. Six is equal to three plus three. Then say you have 8, uh, 3 plus 5, plus 5, or uh, uh, say 10, uh, 5 plus 5, uh, and then 12, it uh, would be uh, 5 plus 7, right? Uh, so 10 is 
plus 3 plus 7 plus plus 7 and, and, and so forth and so uh, and it has not been proved yet so let's define this predicate alright p of y um, so y is even and um, uh, y is greater than 2 so it's an even number greater than 2 and um, let's define bounded two bounded existential quantifiers there is no such x um, less than um, or equal to y and x1 and there is no uh, x2 um, less than or equal to uh, y uh, such that um, um, uh, both of them are primes uh, prime x1 and prime x2 and uh, they sum up and their sum is 1. So essentially uh, we are uh, testing if uh, y uh, breaks uh, a gold box conjecture, uh, the even number one. Okay, uh, so then we can, uh, let's say we define this, uh, this function g, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no arguments, we're looking for minimum for y for which py is true. Uh, so um, now Goldbach's conjecture it uh, it's e either true or, or false. So if the conjecture is uh, is uh, 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 true, right, then uh, a G uh, is undefined because we will never be able to find uh, such a number that breaks uh, the Goldbach's uh, uh, breaks the Goldbach conjecture. Right. So we will just th this will be uh, looking forever. Because uh, the conjecture, if if it is true, um, will be true for every even uh, number greater than uh, greater than two. Now, if on the other hand, uh, if the conjecture is uh, false, uh, if the conjecture is false, then uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have um, uh, a number that eventually. Um, um, for which the conjecture is uh, uh, is false, breaks that conjecture, uh, such that um, uh, y is even and uh, greater than two, and uh, it does not, uh, it's not the sum of two uh, uh, of uh, of two prime numbers. Right, and uh, as soon as uh, that number is reached, uh, then uh, min uh, uh, p y will return, will return. So in that case. It is um, uh, that the function can be it's always a function it's, uh, it becomes computable um, so uh, this is uh, uh, theorem 7.2 uh, in uh, um, uh, the book computability complexity and languages by uh, Davis Segal and Whitaker second edition in chapter 3 uh, that explores um, the relationship between unbounded uh, minimalization and uh, uh, partial computability so let's um, assume that um, p of t x1 to xm, we're just putting p as the first argument, it doesn't really matter, it can be the last one first, uh, is a uh, computable, computable uh, predicate. Uh, well, it's total and there is an L program that uh, computes it. Uh, then um, uh, then uh, the minimal, unbounded minimal, uh, minimalization of that predicate defined as uh, min um, of y, um, uh, uh, p of uh, y x1 uh, to xm uh, is, uh, is partially computable. So um, let's sketch a proof. Uh, all we have to do uh, to prove that this is a partially computable uh, function um, is to um, exhibit a program uh, in uh, uh, our formalism, uh, the language L. You can uh, watch the previous screencasts on the theory of computation if you want to familiarize uh, yourself uh, with, uh, with this formalism. So if uh, p of y, x1 through xm are the two inputs and y is the output variable, go to e. So we just output uh, output e, otherwise increase the value of y by 1. Uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, go back to the first statement again. So we can label it with, uh, with A. Right, so this program, uh, if uh, there exists uh, a value of y for which py x1 through xn is true, uh, then it will return it eventually. Uh, so like we tested uh, p of 0 on x1 through xn, and if it is true, we go to e and return it. Um, uh, if uh, then we go to y equals 1 and uh, test uh, p1, x1 uh, through xn, and if it is true, we will return it. And eventually, if there exists, um, such a value of um, uh, y, we will get to it and return it. If not, then uh, this code will never terminate. And here's, here's a, we, we can put a t uh, in the last uh, place. It's just a positional argument. There's nothing magic about it. It's just uh, in the code uh, program uh, will change and it will read as uh, if p x1 through xn of uh, y um, uh, is true, then go to e, uh, increment uh, increment y, uh, y1, and then uh, go to a. So that shows that uh, uh, g of x is partially computable.